Hey there guys, this is Chanty J. Ken, and welcome to another episode of Minecraft Ah, oh, my head, my head, ah, oh, ah, oh, bad idea. Minecraft Academy, sorry about that. Okay, so anyway, um, where we were last time was actually looking at doing some cave exploration stuff um, for this episode, but but we are we are just not set up for that. Oh good, sun is rising, excellent. Uh, we do have, basically what we need to do first is get some food stuff going here. Uh, you will note that we do have two cooked mutton, and we did eat one already to uh, get um, our hunger back up in the last episode. Um, and then we found this cave, and I was like, maybe we can do cave exploring. But we're actually going to save that because, like I said, we're not set up for that yet. We need more food to take down, because if it's a big cave and we get lost in there, uh, which does happen, and I'll show you some tricks and strategies uh, for avoiding that uh, when we get to that, but um, it's good to have food with you so that you don't starve to death down there. Now, I would respawn back in my bed. Uh, but I would lose all of the cool stuff that I picked up down in the cave, which is kind of the point of going. So, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, food and what you should do in order to get that. Now, you already know that killing sheep will drop uh, mutton, which you can cook in a furnace and uh, get cooked mutton. Uh, cows will drop steak, uh, and it's basically the same procedure for that. Rabbits will drop... Uh, Rabbit, I'm assuming. I've never actually killed a rabbit. Let's do that real quick. No! Come back! Come back! No! Gotcha. Why? Well, he didn't drop anything. Was that like a baby or something? I don't know. Uh, rabbits will drop some form of rabbit occasionally, and you can cook that and eat that as well. Um, and pigs will, of course, drop pork chops and chickens, chickens, etc, etc. Uh, zombies do drop rotten flesh, which you can eat, but what happens is you act... Okay, let me get here. Uh, down here, you see your hunger bars? What will happen if you eat zombie flesh is it'll give you a, a status effect on the side here called hunger. Uh, it only lasts for about three seconds, but it usually takes away about three of your uh, little meat pop slash chicken nuggets slash whatever you want to call these. Uh, that represent your hunger meter. So it will take you down um, below a level where you can regenerate your health. Now it's uh, decent in a pinch, like if you're uh, absolutely about to starve to death, you can take a stack of rotten flesh, or like five or six of them, eat them all at the same time, and it'll fill your hunger bar up to here, and all it's going to do with the hunger effect is actually reset the timer on it. Uh, so it'll take you from pretty much nothing to full and then back down to uh, three shy of full. Uh, which is okay, because that, that makes it better than where you were at. And lag. Okay. So, yes. Um, but yeah, that's sort of an emergency situation thing. Alternatively, uh, milk will remove status effects. So if you have a bucket of... Uh, bucket which you make out of iron and I will show you that later in the series um, and you've been able to milk a cow with it you uh, will have a bucket of milk and you can drink that after eating the zombie flesh to remove the status effect and keep your full hunger from that so that is another option and requires a little prior planning but it's it's a it's a good way to go um, so bucket of milk decent thing to take down into a dark scary cave uh, but for today, farming, yes, let's let's get started with that. First thing, there, okay, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. There are basically five major crops that you can farm using uh, dirt. Uh, there's some other stuff like netherrack you can farm, or not netherrack, wow, uh, nether wart, sorry guys. Uh, but that requires soul sand and is a different thing, and you use it for potions, not even a food thing. Um... But as far as crops that you can grow, you have wheat, you have potatoes, you have carrots, and then a couple slightly different ones, you have pumpkins, uh, which you can't eat directly, but you can turn into pumpkin pie, so there is that option. And of course you have um, watermelon, which you can't eat directly. Now those are both vine-based <clears throat> crops, 
uh, which means basically you will grow the vine and then it will randomly spawn a melon or a pumpkin next to it. So like if you planted the vine seeds here, it would grow and it would spawn one of those here, 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 or here, uh, as long as it was a valid spot, such as uh, dirt. So basically you would need a dirt block next to it. Now you can force it to only spawn in one area, so like you have the vine here, and you remove all the dirt except for this one, it will only spawn them there. Uh, so it does allow you to organize those kind of farms a little bit, but does make them a little bit less efficient. So it's kind of up to you what you want to do with that. <clears throat> um, but we're going to start out with the basics, since we don't have watermelon and pumpkin seeds right now. Uh, we're actually going to start with wheat. And in order to get wheat seeds, let's get rid of the doors, because we don't need those, you actually just punch grass. So, uh, this is our yard for the moment. It is very untidy, like so full of tall weeds. Let's go ahead and get rid of these. And look, grass. Now, it's not grass seed, it's actually wheat seeds. So, <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and punch some more of this. And I don't know what it is, but there is actually something kind of therapeutic about punching grass, which I guess doesn't make a lot of sense. You just sort of, like, run around, and I don't know what the grass ever did to me, but it, it just feels nice to, to go around and get rid of this stuff. And that's an interesting thing. I don't know if you're seeing that on your guys' video, but there's a little... When you hit the too high grass from the bottom, you get that little white flash up at the top. Uh, thinking that's like a graphical glitch or something to that effect. Uh, let's try and get like a dozen seeds here to get started. Okay, so there we go. Um, but yeah, interesting thing. Uh, so now farming generally you want to do near water. And we can actually move water around using a bucket. But for right now we don't have one of those. So we're actually going to take the farm down to the water. Now, what you can do with a setup like this, we're actually going to use this area right here and just clear this out a bit <clears throat> so there's no grass on this plane. And uh, now we need to grab our hoe. I'm going to put that in place of the pick since we're not mining at the moment. And uh, the water will actually irrigate land up to four blocks away. And... I believe it'll go two blocks down and maybe one block up, but I'm not 100% on that last part. But well, anyway, so you use the hoe, you till the soil, and then you plant seeds in the tilled soil. Now you'll see a little bit later in the video, as the water sort of absorbs into the ground here, uh, this is going to turn darker like that does. That means it is irrigated and water is getting to it. If it does not turn that color uh, ever, and it's not, it can take some time, but if it never turns that color, um, that means your land is not getting irrigated. Your stuff will still grow, uh, which means you can grow stuff like this in the nether and whatnot, but it will grow more slowly. Uh, additionally, if you want stuff to grow really fast, uh, you can put torches next to it so that it still has light with which to grow. Uh, during the night. Uh, during the day, of course, it has sunlight, and that is perfectly fine for that. And etc., etc. So, uh, if you are absolutely in desperate straits and you just barely have. Um, yeah, you just barely have any hunger left, uh, you can't. Like, you can't even, like, move or jump around, or you will starve to death. What you can do is actually, if you have this stuff planted, uh, we will get to that for a second. But right now, you, you need to... Haha, -ha, rabbit. See? Rabbit. Oh, that's just the hide. I don't know if they give you food or not. That's something to look into. Um, but yes, don't need rabbits destroying our crops. And it's, it's almost nighttime, isn't it? Okay, so I will head back inside right quick. We will sleep off the night, and I will continue talking while we're doing that. <clears throat> okay, so basically... Oh, I'm not sure why the video is so laggy. Sorry about that, guys. A little bit irritating, I realize. Okay, so basically... you The, the wheat's growth depends on time passing. 
Um, whereas your hunger dropping actually is based on your movement. So jumping, sprinting, running, walking, all is going to reduce your hunger. Swinging your sword really reduces your hunger. Um, but if you just stand here and don't move at all, your hunger will never drop. So if you do have this stuff planted already, uh, because this only requires time to grow, it doesn't actually need you to move around, um, you can actually just stand right here next to it and wait for it to grow. And then once it's grown, you can collect it, craft it into food, eat it, and haha, you cheated the system. Now, uh, this does not bode well for uh, this particular location. If you did need to do that, you'd probably want to do that somewhere a little bit safer than just completely out in the open. Uh, but, of course, that is up to you guys. Now, I like to spam torches around farms such as this just to make sure they have lots and lots of light during the evenings. Not that I allow the night to last very long, but just in case. Now, uh, you did notice before, uh, earlier, yes, earlier before, <laughs> it's necessary to say, um, that the rabbit jumped on one of these and it came up. That is not something unique to the rabbits. Uh, any mob that falls or jumps on land has a chance of untilling it and thus uprooting any seeds or crops that are there. So for instance, if I jump on this, even though it's irrigated and growing, um, it can become untilled <clears throat> and the seed uh, becomes an entity again, which you can pick up if you're the one untilling it or it'll just like float there or whatnot. So it makes sense to go ahead and uh, actually protect farms like this that are out in the open with some sort of fence, uh, just kind of going around it uh, to keep mobs and stuff off of it. And that is probably something that we will do at some point. In fact, do we have wood? We do have some wood. Uh, let me show you fence crafting. Uh, this has gone through a change recently because they added uh, different color fences. It used to be that they were all oak, uh, no matter what. Now it is uh, let's start there. Um, yeah, now you can get them in multiple colors. Ironically, we're using oak, so you just get to see the regular oak fences. And I only was able to get three out of that. So we will have to get some more wood here rather quickly. Uh, but I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about, and we will go back to <clears throat> that. Now, this the method of farming that we're using for... Oh, this would be like a nice little secluded farm. Anyway, um, the method we're using here with the tilling of the soil and all of that is... Get away from my crops, cow. Uh, is the same method you would use to grow uh, potatoes or uh, carrots, um, you just plant those directly in the soil and they grow to full height and you hit them and they produce uh, food for you. Um, for the uh, watermelons or pumpkins, uh, you would till a piece of land, plant the seed here, and then the pumpkin or melon will spawn in one of these four squares that are adjacent to this one. It will not do diagonals though. And you see there, that wasn't irrigated, so it untilled itself, uh, which does happen. So, uh, however, that will not happen if, for instance, you have a seed, so you till it, you plant the seed really quick, that will just grow. Uh, and we'll actually leave that there as a little bit of a demo, so you can see in future episodes that that does in fact grow, it's just going to take a while. Okay, so, uh, now for fence... Thing. It was a bit silly to put torches up here because I knew I was going to put a fence around this, but eh, you know, what can you do? And in this particular case, we're actually going to take it another block back um, because if you have the fence right next to a block like that, uh, creatures can still jump over it. Okay, so here, this is actually uh, in the game code as 1.5. Uh, blocks tall, so a block and a half, even though it looks like it's only a block tall. 
So while I can jump up on top of this, because it's only a block, I cannot jump on top of this. And that's the way that the fences function. But if you have it right next to a block like this is, I can go onto this block and walk up here, that being only half a block. And then go inside from there. So you, you want to make sure that these are not next to blocks like this, unless you're actually trying to capture stuff, in which case you can use that as a method for uh, uh, like trapping things. And of course, uh, torches can go on top of fences as well um, for decoration or practical purposes. And yeah, so off camera, I will make more of those and sort of surround the farm with them so nothing can get at my farm from here, practically speaking. Now there's, there's still a way and you can jump up from the water and all of that, but uh, yeah. Uh, so this will actually produce wheat, which we can craft into bread and uh, get a reliable food source for going into the caves. Alternatively, we could use the wheat to breed the cows, uh, putting them in a pen also made of fence posts, or perhaps just digging a hole for them and shoving them in, you know, kindly, gently, because that's how you treat cows. Treat animals with respect. Anyway, <laughs> um... Yeah, so we could potentially use the wheat to breed the cows and then um, kindly lower their numbers with this sword of friendliness uh, and take the stake and leather that they would give us in exchange for doing them such a kindness, if you catch my meaning. Okay, so, uh, by which I mean we would kill them and, and eat them. Alright, um, yeah, so that's kind of food for you. Uh, there are other things that you can craft. You can make cakes, and as I mentioned before, pumpkin pies. Uh, you do need some additional ingredients for those sorts of things, like uh, milk, eggs, and sugar, which is made from sugar cane, which I don't see here at the moment. Maybe down here? Uh, sugar cane will always spawn by the water's edge. It actually requires it to... Uh, stay planted and grow and all of that and I don't see any so okay uh, That will be something we try to find in a later episode Maybe maybe sugar cane No, okay. I don't see it, but we we will find some at some point or another uh, But yes, that is base the basics of farming and that should get you started for uh, getting food and stuff uh, ready to go for all the things that you plan on doing in your Minecraft world. Now, uh, you saw how to get the seeds. Carrots and potatoes are <clears throat> acquired through one of two possible means. You can actually get them in naturally spawned villages. Um, they will have them set up in farms and you just like punch a couple of them and just pick them up and you can plant your own farms further away. And you know, the villagers probably don't appreciate that, but it doesn't affect your popularity or anything like that. So, um, I don't know, just hit the full-grown grown ones, and uh, if you want to be really nice, replant them, and you'll have the extras that came from the crop, and that'll, that'll work. Um, additionally, if you cannot find a village, or if you play without generated structures on, like I typically do, um, you can get carrots and potatoes from killing zombies. They are actually uh, rare drops. Um, from those particular moms, and uh, yeah, it, it takes a little bit, because like I say, they are rare drops, but once you've got one, you can plant it and let it grow, and it'll turn into like two or three, and you can plant those, and etc, etc. It, it gets big, and you have giant farms, and you're like, oh my gosh, so many carrots and potatoes. Uh, now, in 1.8 as well, and while we're talking about this, we'll go inside because the sun is setting. Um, they have changed the villager mechanics so that the brown-robed villagers, the farmers, fletchers, fishers, etc., uh, etc., et uh, will all actually uh, farm for you. So if you have a farm set up and they're in the area, they will approach the farmland, they will break anything that's fully grown, they will grab the wheat and the seeds, they will replant the seeds in the tilled soil, and uh, they will actually craft the wheat into bread, uh, which they can use to breed more villagers, or if they see that some villagers don't have enough bread, 
uh, they can toss that at them or even toss that at the player which will happen occasionally uh, using some of the mechanics found in 1.5 or added in 1.5 and currently found in the game because they wouldn't remove those sorts of things, um, namely hoppers, you can actually set up a fully automatic wheat, carrot, or potato farm using the new villager mechanics in 1.8. So, yay, I'm going to jump up and down on my bed because there's more headroom here. Ha <laughs> ha! So that's exciting. But anyway, that is farming and a little bit of hunting, at least for domesticated animals. Uh, there are other things that you could potentially hunt, but I don't know why you would, because there's not much reason to do so. At least not for food. Um, most of the hunting you do is going to be for monsters. And it's night, so we will sleep, and I will bid you adieu. So, thank you guys for watching. Remember, if you found this lesson helpful, or... If you just loved the video so much, go ahead and leave a like, and remember, if you are not subscribed, be sure to click that subscription button so that you can become a subscriber for the channel, support the channel, and of course get notifications when new stuff is coming out. So, thank you guys for watching, and as always, I will talk to you later.